following video is not made for kids. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello to my subscribers. This is the Sandy coming to you with what will be, hopefully be a successful review. And today we're going to be taking a look at a Transformers figure, figure that uh, the general consensus from Transformers fans and collectors is you either completely love this figure or you completely hate it and there isn't much middle ground regarding this figure. And it is Transformers Legacy Leader Class Blitzwing. Released uh, East last year in what year one of the Legacy line. I mean, I mean, a lot of Transformers fans and collectors, they enjoy, enjoy this action figure for being uh, faithful to Blitzwing's animation model in the G1 cartoon. Soon, at least when Blitzwing is transformed into his robot mode, but for the designs of his two alt modes of a jet and a tank, that's where it kind of falls short, and also his accessory pieces that are included as well. Now, basically, aesthetically, this figure tried at its best to be the most G1 accurate version of Blitzwing, and there were some areas where air and air and the Transformers fans and collectors said that G1 accuracy uh, you know, that has run to cartoon went a little too far are on the Legacy Leader Class Blitzwing figure. Figure so aesthetically, this figure is a faithful version of Blitzwing as a Transformers character, but the actual action figure itself is not the greatest. And the general consensus from most Transformers fans and collectors is that it's not the greatest figure to be released in the Legacy line. So here we got artwork of Blitzwing in his robot mode. Here he is in his tank mode. Coming in here on the side of the box, you got some artwork of his jet mode, and you got the same image of the tank mode that's here on the front of the box. This side, you've got the Decepticon half of the poster image for Legacy Year One. You've got the Legacy logo on the top of the box. Come on here to the back, you've got Blitzwing in his robot mode. Here he is in his tank mode and his jet mode. And it takes Blitzwing 41 steps to transform from his robot mode to his jet mode. And it takes him, if I'm reading the box correctly, it takes uh, only 32 steps for Blitzwing to get from his robot mode to his his jet mode. It doesn't say how many steps it takes to convert Blitzwing back and forth between robot mode and tank mode <clears throat> and tank mode, but tank mode, so unfortunately I don't know how many steps are involved with that. But we can see here on the back of his box, um, one of the things that a lot of Transformers and collectors don't like about Legacy Blitzwing is that two of his accessory pieces are these giant gauntlet glove hands that act double as a pair of missile launchers, launchers, and the places where they're stored in both tank mode and in jet mode, it's just outright goofy looking, and it doesn't look all that impressive. As if uh, one nice thing is that Blitzwing does come with a pair of dual laser guns, and he comes with the sword weapon that his original Generation One action figure came with. But even before I actually get in it, Blitzwing out of his box, box uh, a moment ago, and I said that. For many fans and collectors, that G1 accuracy has run to car. Tommy went too far with Legacy Blitzwing in that regard. And it's because of this right here in his tank mode. In the G1 cartoon, Blitzwing, Sunbow Productions animated Blitzwing's tank mode with the cockpit of his jet mode sticking out of the front of the tank in a few screenshots. And technically, the Generation 1 toy kind of sort of transformed that way, but the actual jet cockpit ended up on the bottom of the tank. It ended up sticking out. Or the front of it like that, and that is actually a faux jet cockpit that was created for the purpose of, just for the sole purpose of sticking out of the front of the tank mode. The actual jet cockpit is, uh, if I remember from the reviews I saw already, um, already it's a different part, but I could be wrong, but yeah, the, on the Generation 1 Blitzwing action figure, he was able to hide his jet mode cockpit success well, and it's sticking out of the front in tank mode here was just to make his tank mode completely accurate to his G1 animation model in the cartoon series, and in the minds of many Transformers fans and collectors, that is a part of G1 accuracy that was taken too far, and they could have lived without the cockpit of the jet mode sticking out of the front of the tank, tank in favor of the tank mode looking more like an actual battle tank. Ink. So that was a design. That was a engineering feature in the design of Le of the Legacy Blitzwing action figure that 
A lot of Transformers fans and Clickers are not fans of it all. Especially, oh, and then of course his accessory pieces of the uh, Gatling gun and uh, glove hands. And, uh, and a lot of Transformers fans and collectors, collectors thought that maybe these hands and us and uh, following the play pattern from the uh, Legacy Wave 1 Core Class figures of Core Class Hot Rod, Iguanas, and Skywarp having uh, their weapons combined into a larger sword. A lot of Transformers fans and collectors wondered if maybe the uh, gauntlet hands that come with Blitzwing, that maybe they might be the combiner hands for Legacy Menasaur. Or, but no, the, oh, these are not, these hands are not designed for Menasaur, they were designed for Blitzwing's use and, use and maybe the, and possible use on other leader class Transformers figures, so, those hands are meant for the use for Blitzwing, and to my knowledge, knowledge, uh, Blitzwing has never used weapons like the, weapons like these gauntlet hands before, this is a brand new feature introduced here on the Legacy Action figure. Figure. And no, the photos are not a lie. The only place to store the store the gauntlet hands when Blitzwing transforms into his tank mode is having them sticking off the sides of the tank turret. It's even acknowledged here in the artwork on the box. Ox and no matter how you look at it, it is just one of the uh, goofiest and silliest looking uh, weapon storage it, storage that you can come with. And in the minds of many Transformers fans and collectors, the uh, Gauntlet hands that Blitzwing comes with, they're among the worst accessory pieces to come with any of the uh, Legacy figures that were released last year in 2022. So, now that I've accidentally torn through the box aside, right, let's uh, get Blitzwing out of his box. Ox and take a close, close look at, at him in his first mode. Alright, so, similar to the other Legacy the uh, leader class Transformers figures, rather than being packaged in robot mode, Blitzwing out of the box comes packaged in his tank mode. So that is the mo mode we will be starting with. If and tank mode has always been my favorite of Blitzwing's two alt modes. I've never really been a fan of Blitzwing's jet at design, and that's because and the legacy figure kind of sort of tries to be faithful to how Generation One Blitzwing's jet mode transformed into, but into but one thing that it's Always, that, in my opinion, has always been true about Blitzwing's jet mode is that um, even though the tank turrets just transform up underneath the uh, wings of the jet, mo jet mode here, the way it looks, I've always imagined uh, Blitzwing's jet mode being almost like a biplane, like a bi-jet where he has uh, two sets of wings, wings coming out of his fuselage, or uh, actually, uh, let me rephrase that, with biplanes you actually technically have four wings. Wings coming out of them. You have a pair of wings on top and a pair of wings on the bottom. So that's what I've always imagined uh, Blitzwing's jet mode was trying to be. It was like a jet version of a biplane. And so I've never really been a fan of the jet mode. So the tank mode has always been my favorite of Blitzwing's alt modes. And on that note, oh, yeah, there is just no excuse for that jet mode cockpit sticking out here on the front of Blitzwing's tank mode. Tank mode and many Transformers fans and collectors have said that uh, and that this is a case of G1 accuracy going too far. The fake, the tank mode would be. I agree with Transformers fans and collectors who said this last year when Blitzwing was first released. The tank mode would have been much better if the jet mode cockpit was not sculpted on the front like this to match up with his animation model from Sumbo Productions. I personally think that it would have benefited from benefited from folding up a, a here underneath the base of the tank, tank like it does on the original Generation 1 Blitzwing action figure. So, this is Blitzwing's tank mode with all of his accessory pieces attached. And so, pretty much the only storage place for the uh, gauntlet hands is just sticking off the sides of the turret. Uh, technically, the photos on, photos on Blitzwing's box and in his instruction sheet show that you're supposed to put his uh, two purple laser guns on the 5 million ports here farther up to the front of his tank mode, and then you can store his sword off one of the sides for it, but to try and make Blitzwing as symmetrical as possible, the possible you can store the sword here on top of the tank turret, turret if you want. Unfortunately, there's no uh, 5mm ports down the bottom middle of, middle of the tank mode, so if you want Blitzwing to have a symmetrical look to him, that's the best place, that's the only spot to put the sword on. 
hard on. Um, like most tank transformers, a Blitzwing actually has a has a set of four uh, plastic wheels on him. Because of how he transforms, the tank treads don't end up in one piece when you transform him into his other two modes. Oh, but from video reviews I've seen, uh, the wheels roll moderately well depending on the type of surface you have Blitzwing rolling on. So yeah, they're using his own box for not as an example. Uh, ample, the wheels do roll fairly well. So one nice thing about the tank mode is that the rocket boosters of the jet mode end up on the back, so you can imagine this being a rocket propelled tank if you want. Uh, like an actual tank, the tank turret can spin 360 degrees clockwise and counterclockwise. Um, when the sword is or it is uh, detached. Ashed, or if you want to have it uh, pointing the opposite direction, actually, you can uh, rotate the uh, barrel of the tank's cannon upward and downward, so that's a nice feature. Each your end up. Overall, for what it's trying to be, um, with the exception of the jet mode cockpit sticking out of the front, and which uh, is a ter was a terrible design choice, I believe. The, the tank mode over overall is a pretty fairly decent looking tank. And I do like how the shades of uh, uh, tan and purple used on Legacy Blitzwing, while they're not necessarily the same shades used on his animation model from some cartoon animation model from Sumbo Productions, they are relatively close to his close to his Generation One action figure. Um, the G1 cartoon Blitzwing was a had a much brighter shade of uh, purple than what's used here on his Legacy figure. Here. But overall, I do, uh, with the exception of that jet mode cockpit sticking out the front, I do enjoy how the tank mode turned out. Alright, and so for some quick size comparisons, while Blitzwing is in his tank mode, mode I will bring out for some, with, compared to some other Transformers action figures, here he is next to um, Astro Train, who was released in the Siege. He was originally released in the Siege line, and Astro Train, he transforms into such a long locomotive when you have a fuel tender attached to the back of him, he's not fitting on camera with the angle that I have him to, so there he is without the fuel tender, which makes him more G1 accurate. And for another special size comparison, here also is Titan's Return Octane in his in his uh, fuel tanker truck mode, Odin. I apologize, but for the way, for the way I have my camera angled, I... And this is the best way I can get all three of them in, in shot with each other, so. There is Blitzwing next to his fellow Decepticon Triple Changers. Um, some Transformers fans and collectors who did do size comparisons of Blitzwing with these uh, uh, figures. Figures last year when he was released. Uh, East. A lot of uh, collectors have said that they would like to see a new updated version of Octane. And just like we got leader class figures of Astro Train and Blitzwing here. Here. Octane went... And even though he's almost the same size as these guys, when he was released in the Titans Return line, he's actually a Voyager class Transformer, so the fact that he's the same size as Blitzwing and Astro Train is unfortunately further evidence of how Hasbro has been slowly downsizing Transformers action figures over the last few years. Here's but overall I do and see this trio lined up right here. Uh, before Legacy Blitzwing was released, the previous uh, G1 version of Blitzwing that I had in my Transformers collection was the Titans Return version, and even though that version of Blitzwing was a f was and remains a fairly a decent Blitzwing action figure, the Legacy figure here I wholeheartedly enjoy really a lot more than I did Titans Return Blitzwing. And, and on that note, um, I apologize for not bringing out any of my other Blitzwing action figures to do size comparisons with, but technically, out of the three Decepticon Triple Changers, Blitzwing was the last of the three triple changers that I added a action figure of to my Transformers collection action and for a while he had uh, action and for a while he was the uh, my uh, actually no that's incorrect I did have a figure of Blitzwing or, or so never mind but the point I was trying to get is that uh, because for a while Blitzwing action figures of him weren't released as much as they were for Octane and Astro Train I mean, uh, when I started collecting the Deceptic modern day figures of the Decepticon Triple Changers, uh, Blitzwing was the one that I had the least amount of, and today, 
Hey, that's reversed. I now have more action figures of Blitzwing than I do of Astro Train and Octane. I only have two action figures each of Octane and Astro Train, and I now have up to four action figures of Blitzwing in my Transformers collection. The other Blitzwing figures I have are Animated Blitzwing with Ing from 2008, which was my first ever a Blitzwing action figure. A year, and then there's of course the uh, Thr Generations Thrilling 30 Blitzwing figure released in 2013. That's my so that was my second Blitzwing, and then my third, of course, was Titans Return Blitzwing, and now Legacy Blitzwing has become my fourth action figure of this Decepticon Triple Changer. So, uh, even though it, even though, uh, oh, I'm not counting the Transformers animated version of Blitzwing, and counting uh, versions of him, versions based off of his Generation One self. Even though Blitzwing was the last of the three Decepticon Triple Changers to be given a modern day action figure, Astro Trains. Uh, got a figure in the Classics line in 2006, and Octane got a figure in the Universe line in 2008. Blitzwing has surprisingly gotten the most action figures out of all three of the Decepticon Triple Changers now, so that is uh, really impressive that even though he was the last of the Triple Changers to be given a modern-day generation-style figure, that he now has more figures than his uh, fellow Triple Changers do. So I babbled on long enough about that. Let's get Blitzwing transformed armed into my least favorite of his three modes, Jet Mode. Alright, so here is Blitzwing transformed into his Jet Mode, and yeah, this is one of the, uh, as accurate as it is to Generation 1 Blitzwing, G1 Blitzwing's Jet Mode, it's one of the uh, wonkiest looking jets it's that I've ever seen, I mean, even among Transformers action figures, and yeah, this is one of the goofiest jets that I've seen in a long time, even compared to the jet modes of my previously, previously bought uh, Blitzwing action figures, this jet mode is my least favorite of them all, even more so than Titans Return Blitzwing, which was previously my least favorite uh, jet mode Blitzwing action figure. Uh, the instruction sheets don't, don't really uh, show a spot to put the sword, I just put it there on top of the tank turret again, and just to try and give him a symmetrical look, and then to attach the uh, attach the uh, hand gauntlets, you're supposed to open the uh, the uh, jet thrusters to reveal these five millimeter ports, and then that's in there. Trying to get the hand gauntlets out can be a bit of a pain, especially considering the amount of force you have to use, and it's also clear red plastic. So I will be back in a moment while I get these transformed. Alright, so it was a little bit more of a pain than it needed to be, but according to uh, Blitzwing's instruction sheet and his box, the only way to store the gauntlet hands in jet mode is having them sticking out here on the back and act acting as a pair of, uh, let's see, how many, uh, the set of rocket boosters, how many rocket boosters do you get? Twelve. So yeah, that's, uh, it is a improvement over how you store them in tank mode, but overall it uh, doesn't really improve the look of Blitzwing's jet mode that much. And one problem I'm seeing with Blitzwing in jet mode is that none of his wings actually tab into place anywhere, not even the tail fins. And so, nothing really tabs too well together. The only parts that actually tab in place are the uh, tan parts from tank mode. But in jet mode, there's a lot of loose parts that arts folding around in. Blitzwing's jet mode relies heavily on friction to friction to not lose shape. Ape. One thing I will admit that I have always liked about Blitzwing is that he transforms from a purple jet into a tan into a tan tank, so I do love the color change change that Blitzwing undergoes when he goes back and forth between both alt modes. I do enjoy that. Alright, and so for some quick size comparisons in jet mode, here is Blitzwing next to uh to, uh, War vs. Cybertron Trilogy Astro Train and Titans Return Octane, and I apologize for not have, getting them on full screen here, here on my camera, but yeah, there is Blitzwing next to uh, Astro Train and Octane. But yeah, overall, I do en enjoy seeing all three of these figures lined up next to each other. Uh, there. And again, even though Octane's a Voyager class and these two figures are leader class, as uh, both 
uh, Siege, Astro Train, and Legacy Blitzwing. They're examples of how Leader Class Transformers figures have been downsized to the same size as what Voyager Class Transformers were during the uh, early to mid 2010s. And does they accidentally pop a hat off? But yeah, I do enjoy how aesthetically they are somewhat similar to each other. Other. So without further delay, let's get um, Blitzwing transformed into his robot mode and wrap up the review. Alright, and here is Blitzwing transformed into his robot mode. Um, oh, uh, this is my favorite of Blitzwing's modes. Oh, I've always enjoyed the way his head sculpt is designed and how <clears throat> his paint job from jet mode and tank mode are distributed out he, evenly. He's half, he's half tan, half purple. I love the Decepticon logos on his legs, that's a nice touch there, and they still kept the one he's had on the cent always had on the center of his chest, that's a really nice feature there as well. Unfortunately, the tank turret doesn't really lock in place that well, so it will swerve back and forth, or if you move, try and move it around too much. You also have the option of leaving the tank, uh, the barrel folded outward, you have to rotate it into the tank turret. 180 degrees for storage space. Hey, so on Generation 1, Blitzwing it just popped it off, popped inward and outward. Outward, so I do enjoy that design feature there. Uh, but pretty much that's all there is. <clears throat> As my voice starts to fail me because it's late at night and I normally don't talk at this hour. <clears throat> yeah, for articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so Blitzwing can look downward just a bit, he can look upward quite a bit, it's how he can spin 360, has the potential to spin 360 degrees clockwise and counterclockwise. One thing I'm disappointed to see is that all of the uh, yellow on Blitzwing's helmet, it is paint, it's not plastic, so why in the world they didn't just cast that in yellow plastic and then paint his uh, face and visor, visor uh, silver and red respectively is beyond me. Uh, the arms have the potential to spin 360 degrees ease at the shoulder, but it's hindered by the fact that the shoulder itself is inside the uh, uh, front of the tank. And so you have spin, you have swivel joint, joints in the bicep, hinged elbows. Uh, the hands can spin 360 degrees, ease clock inward and outward at the wrists. It's, uh, one thing I am somewhat disappointed to see is that Blitzwing's uh, sword is made out of a uh, rubbery plastic, so on my copy of Blitzwing, the sword, the top, is bent slightly at the tip. If so, that's a little frustrating to see there. And he does have a wrist swivel. He's got legs that can go forward and back, forward a lot. Can't really go backwards too much. Too much. A uh, swivel joint in the thigh, but it's hindered by the uh, sculpting in the legs. You got a hinged knee. He, the toes can technically angle upward and downward, but that's more of a transformation joint. And you have uh, ankle joints here, so you can get Blitzwing into a sprawl-legged pose if you want. And one nice thing about the about the uh, newer modern-day Blitzwing action figures is that Blitzwing has actual robot mode feet. On the original Generation 1 Blitzwing action figure, you rotated his uh, jet mode tail fins forward, and that, and that actually was... That is actually Generation 1 Blitzwing's feet are the uh, tail fins of the jet mode, so it's nice that on more modern modern day uh, Blitzwing action figures, Hasbro and Takarotomi have been able to design actual toes, bows, and an actual robot mode foot for Blitzwing, so that's really nice to see there. But yeah, overall, um, all, uh, robot mode is my favorite of Blitzwing's three modes, tank mode is a very close second, and jet mode is my least favorite of his three modes, but I do enjoy how much more accurate this is to Blitzwing's animation model compared to his past figures. And I won't attach the uh, gauntlet hands to him because they just look ridiculous, and they are among the uh, worst accessory pieces that any Transformers figure released in the Legacy Year 1 line could have had. Alright, and one last time for some size comparisons in robot mode here is Legacy Blitzwing next to uh, Siege Astro Train, and of course, um, have all three of the Decepticon Triple Changers out. Here is also uh, Titans Return Octane. 
again, I apologize for not being able to quite get all, all of them on, on screen together, but there you are, there you have all of the, uh, there's all three of the Decepticon triple changers lined up next to each other. And so overall, I do all a uh, Legacy Blitzwing, despite his flaws, he is the most G1 accurate looking Blitzwing figure released to date. And, um, whether or not he will hold the title of being my favorite Blitzwing figure, I honestly cannot say because I do en still enjoy my Thrilling 30 Blitzwing figure from 2013, and Titans Return Blitzwing does a decent job of being a Blitzwing action figure, but I do enjoy how he stands. Hands next to his fellow Decepticon Triple Changers, especially Astro Train. Hopefully, Hasbro and Dekartomi will consider releasing a leader class figure of Octane sometime in the near future. Future, even though the Titans Return figures have all been great. Eight, uh, eight. Astro Train and Blitzwing, they're definite improvements over their Titans Return figures, so hopefully, Octane will join them in getting a new figure someday soon. So, for the final question, Question of do I recommend getting Legacy Blitzwing and adding him to your Transformers collection? Well, I only recommend you get Blitzwing if you're a fan of Triple Changers and if you like uh, Voyager class Transformers figures that are sold at a leader class price point because of some lousy, useless accessory pieces that pieces that really don't do much of anything except to just increase the price tag of the figure. Eager, so I only recommend you get Blitzwing if you're a fan of Blitzwing as a Transformers character, and if you uh, don't mind paying a uh, fifty-five dollars U.S. currency for a Transformers action figure that stands the same height, if not slightly shorter, than what Voyager class Transformers averaged in size five to ten years ago. Oh, so yes, uh, Blitzwing definitely is not top tier list for Transformers Legacy figures, he, but he's not the worst of them all. Oh, he's literally right in the middle. It'll as far as the uh, overall quality of uh, Transformers figures go, which is somewhat ironic considering the fact that at the start of the review I had said that a lot of Transformers fans and collectors either really love or really hate Blitzwing with not much middle ground to it. Uh, me personally, he, uh, I do enjoy Blitzwing, but not as much as other Transformers character fans and collectors do, so. But overall, all, um, I don't regret getting Blitzwing and adding him to my Transformers collection, because again, he is a vast improvement over Titans Return Blitzwing, I believe. Thank you guys all so much for watching, this has been the TFangie, this has been my review of Transformers Legacy Blitzwing. And if next time you guys, stay safe, stay healthy, Transformer and roll out. Goodbye everyone. Da -da 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 -da.